is dawn, my favorite time of day. I'll be able to see whatever wildlife is just waking up or going to sleep at this time. I'm glad you're here with me. I just recorded some footage of a couple of white-tailed deer. Oftentimes, rule of thumb is when you see one, there's often more than one in the setting. They're just camouflaged. So in this particular setting, they're very well camouflaged, even though it seems like it's an open space, there's still a lot of undergrowth that sort of hides them. So what I tend to do when I'm out looking for wildlife is I tend to stand still and I wait for them to give themselves away. So in this case here, I was closer to the water and I looked through the um, understory and I saw a couple of ears. So when I looked closer, I realized it was a, a doe that was lying down. So I stayed to be able to video her and she moved into uh, this open area so i just stood back here and videoed her and i realize that now is the time when I, there will tend to be people out on the trails soon with their dogs and so i'm just kind of watching to see what kind of activity we might get um, if it'll stir up a few more deer i was like it when I catch them when they're undisturbed. They might move slowly away from me. When I see deer, I typically give them eye contact so that they know I have seen them and that I'm not approaching them. So that helps them to sort of settle down and carry on. So in this case here, I'm just uh, in an open area, watching and waiting and see what other things might reveal themselves. That's how I spot wildlife.
So as much as the fall is a beautiful time of year, I also look forward to the next stage where we're sort of at that in-between, between fall and winter, where the leaves drop. And the reason for that is it starts to reveal the secrets of the forest. There are a lot of animals that are very difficult to see because they're so well camouflaged in a forest full of leaves and thriving plants. So when we're at that in-between stage, it reveals a little bit more distance that we can see and see the breaks in the pattern when we're looking for animals. So, we're getting to that point. I'll show you the understory and you see it's a lot easier to look through right now.
Well, we've uh, just we've just tidied up the yard. Everything is pretty well ready now for the winter, and we're enjoying a bonfire. Have you got anything to add? Not at this time. <laughs> so we'll have a look and see the kinds of things that we've done to prepare the yard. Uh, we just cut the grass uh, in the weed whacking, so the lawnmower is now ready for the winter. It's been drained. We drained out our, our uh, rain barrel, which would have been uh, provided with all the water from the roof of the shed. So we just have it funneling away from the building now. The gardens, uh, I'd mentioned that in a video a couple of weeks ago that we were gonna have to clean out the gardens. And uh, we wanted to do that before we got our uh, second frost of the season. So everything's been cut down now and uh, it's got lots of, lots of compost in it. And then we're gonna add more, more that will come from that barrel when it's uh, broken down properly. And we'll put it in the garden before we plant things in there in the spring. We also like to lay over garden fabric because uh, we don't want to spend all of our time weeding. So that's why you'll see there's bricks and there's boards in there because we use that to hold down the garden fabric. The garden fabric really just lasts one year um, because it disintegrates. And so we have the, the bricks and the boards holding down the garden fabric and then we just cut a hole where the plant goes. So we have individual tomato plants or peppers and things of that nature, but without all the, the soil exposed uh, in order to have a weed party. We don't want to have a lot of weeds in there. And then there's our cabin. And we're not finished with that. We uh, know it's a lot warmer in there, but we're taking advantage of the fact that we have lots of wood. So we wanted to have this uh, bonfire before dinner time today. But here's our cabin. Uh, if you haven't had a chance to see it, I uh, We've had a couple of uh, episodes where we've I've done a wrap up or an introduction in this uh, in this cabin. We built this in, I believe it was uh, May or June of this year, 2021. You can look on the uh, the playlist uh, for the summer of I believe it's. I'll have to get back to you on that if it's the spring or the summer, but I'll put uh, a link in the description. So if you want to, if you're interested in seeing how we built this cabin. Um, we did it and we recorded the whole thing so it's kind of a neat process. We used to have a gazebo on this spot. Uh, the size of it is 12 by 14 feet and so when that gazebo was damaged in hail uh, it had that corrugated plastic kind of roof and after a couple of hailstorms, the upper layer out of the two layers got damaged and so we just uh, limped through for the next four years or so having to cover it with tarps and things like that in the winter. So now we have this uh, maybe three and a half season structure made of wood with a metal roof and we're very, very happy with it. And uh, so I've shown it from time to time and I'll show you the outside of it this time. So that's the side entrance and just inside the side entrance is a pizza maker that uh, I showed from the inside view on uh, a video two weeks ago. Normally we wouldn't have that patio table on the far side. Uh, that's where we're housing it. It came from our deck and we've got some patio furniture stored. We wanted to keep everything on one side so that we can still make use of the other side. I'll show you the front view too.
<laughs> we absolutely love it in there. I found I was using it a lot in the month of October. In the month of September, we were gone for two and a half weeks because that's when our last uh, couple of camping trips up to Arrowhead and, and Algonquin Provincial Parks took place. So uh, October, I was in there, oh, I don't know, two, three times a week. Sometimes uh, just sitting out there, Shannon and I would go out for a cup of tea. And uh, anyway, we'll be sad when we can't use it because of the temperatures, right? When it starts dropping here in southwestern Ontario, when it gets uh, below freezing. But today, the temperature is expected or was expected to be about nine degrees Celsius. And by the time we get through another couple of days, it'll be plus 15 degrees Celsius, which is very unusual because we're in the early part of November. So this is something that we did. I showed this a uh, couple of videos ago to help weatherproof it. I uh, put some uh, plexiglass sides on just the one side that is north facing. And hopefully that'll provide a little bit more warmth inside. And then you can see that the back side is just a, a solid wall. So, all right, I'm gonna sit down and uh, enjoy the bonfire with Shannon. I'm just breaking up the chiclets. Turn that off, please. There's just a little flame under here. 